Hello, Mr. Kaczynski here. I've got uh, some eighth grade math from IXL. Section AA is systems of linear equations. Today we're moving into skill three where we're going to solve a system of equations by graphing, which is exactly what skill two was, but uh, today we're going to work some word problems into it. Four quick examples that should help you get through this skill here today. Two workers are in a holiday boutique and they're filling stockings with small gifts and candy. Annie has already filled up four stockings and will continue to fill them at a rate of two stockings per hour. Bruce, he just helped. He just arrived. He's late. He can fill four stockings per hour, so he's working faster, but he's starting behind her. At some point, Bruce will catch up with Annie, and they will have completed the same number of stockings. How long will that take? Okay, so we're going to write a system and graph the solution. So let's talk about Annie first. Um... Annie's working at a rate of two stockings per hour. That's that's like a slope. Uh, she started with four stockings already filled uh, before Bruce got there. Um, and so we can write an equation for that situation. Y equals 2x plus 4. So when we graph it, we're going to have a y-intercept of 4 and a uh, slope of 2. So there's our y-intercept of 4. Slope of 2 means up 2 over 1. All right, now what about Bruce? Bruce, he is working at a rate of four stockings per hour, so that's his slope, but his y-intercept is zero. Um, so the equation there is going to be y equals 4x. So our system of equations are these two equations. When we graph that, it's going to have a y-intercept of zero and a slope of four. So y-intercept of zero, slope of four means up one, two, three, four, over one. So the question that we're being asked is how long will it take? How many hours will it take? Well, there's where the um, graph crosses. So that's two hours. Okay, so in two hours, they both will have filled eight stockings. So the answer is Bruce will catch up to Annie in two hours. All right, next up, a customer at the mall is shopping for holiday gifts and is considered, considering having them wrapped. He can get them wrapped at the department store. They charge $5 per gift. Alternatively, the customer can pay his niece a flat rate of $15 to wrap all his gifts. You see, if he has a certain number of small packages, it would cost the same amount either way. Um, so what would the total cost be to have all of them wrapped? Well, it's the same either way, and his niece will do them for $15. I mean, the cost is going to be $15, but... At any rate, we have to graph these two, so let's analyze this. The department store is charging $5 per gift. That's their slope. Uh, $0 up front would be their y-intercept. That's a, the equation y equals 5x. So that graph would be a y-intercept of 0, slope of 5. All right. So one thing to note here, too, is that uh, the vertical axis is scaled by 5s. So up five actually means just up one line. That's $5 for every one gift. Up $5 for every one gift. All right, now the niece uh, is charging $0 per gift, but $15 up front. So that's the y-intercept. So the equation is y equals 15. That's just a horizontal line right here at 15. So we're looking for where they cross right here. Three gifts, $15. So um, it must be three gifts, but that he had wrapped. Uh, he's going to choose his niece, probably throw her the money. Um, so it's $15 is the cost, because that's all we were being asked is what's the total cost. Mrs. Livingston wants to get family portraits taken. She's comparing prices from two different photography studios. You got Suzuki Photo photography and they charge five dollars per portrait sheet plus sixty dollars for the session fee but lasting memories company charges twenty dollars for the session fee and ten dollars per portrait so you can see one charges uh, more for the session fee but they charge uh, less for portrait sheets so uh, if mrs. Livingston plans to purchase a certain number of portrait sheets the cost will be the same at either studio how many portrait sheets would that be so like how many portrait sheets would be the break even point? So let's look at Suzuki Photography. They're charging $5 per portrait sheet and a $60 session fee up front. So that's our equation, y equals 5x plus 60. So 60 is our y-intercept. Notice this is scaled by 
tens actually. So we have to be careful when we graph that five slope or that slope of five. So um, if I go up five, I'm sorry, yeah, up ten dollars, that's because I got two extra portrait sheets. So that one's tricky. If you see that, you gotta watch when you're graphing. You gotta always look at scale. Lasting memories, they charge ten dollars per portrait sheet and twenty dollars per session fee. So $20 is going to be our y-intercept because this is our equation, 10x plus 20. And up 10 every one portrait sheet. So wait, let's graph it first. So there's that one. So the tricky one was that orange one because we can't go up 5. We weren't able to plot that point. I mean, we could if we were graphing it ourselves, but not on IXL.com. So uh, the, what are we looking for? How many portrait sheets? So where do they cross? They cross way up here at eight portrait sheets. It'll cost $100 at either site. So the cost will be the same with eight portrait sheets. That's what um, we're looking for as far as the answer. One more. For his parents' anniversary party, Ying is considering using one of two venues. A hotel in Newton will cost him $5 for, $500 for a reservation plus $15 per person. That's pretty swanky. A restaurant in the same city will cost $25 per person. That's more per person in addition to $300 for the reservation, but less for the reservation. In order to make the best decision, Yang figures out how many attendees it would take to have this, the venues cost the same amount. Good idea, Yang. So we've got the hotel charging $15 per person with a $500 reservation. That's this equation. Y equals 15x plus 500. So 500 would be my y-intercept. Um, boy, this is going up a hundred dollars um, for every line. So, man, how do how do we graph that? Um, you know, maybe every ten it goes up one hundred and fifty dollars, but that wouldn't work. Every twenty it goes three hundred dollars. That's the way I'm going to have to look at this. So there's my y-intercept five hundred, and from there, when you go up twenty attendees, twenty times fifteen is three hundred. So it will go up from five hundred to eight hundred. Again, tricky to graph that. The restaurant, they're charging twenty-five dollars per person, and three hundred dollars for the reservation. And I left the equation off, so we'll type that now. How about um, y equals 25x plus 300? So there's our equation. All right, so what does that look like on the graph? It's going to have a y-intercept of 300. I can't go up 25, but I could go up 100 um, for every 4. That doesn't really work. So... You know, if we go up 10, let's think about it. Going up 10, we'd have to go up 250. I can't go up 250 because it's not scaled that way. Going up 20, I'd go up 500. There we go. So 20 times 25 is 500. So when we go up 20 attendees, it goes up $500. And there is our meeting point, by the way, our intersection point, at $800. But that's not what we're being asked. We're not being asked for how, many, how much it will cost. We're being asked for how many attendees. And that is at 20 attendees. So the cost would be the same at either venue with 20 attendees. All right, so stick with this one. It's a little bit difficult. you got to be able to graph the situations, um, you know, plugging in values, different values here uh, to figure out outputs would be a good idea. And then you also have to come up with the right answer after you get that graph by looking at the intersection. Again, this is dealing with skill three in section AA of IXL's eighth grade math.